Spring is in the air in Western Massachusetts. Temperatures in the 60s. And today we have the CAA Men's Lacrosse Game of the Week. Fairfield looking for their first conference win at 0-2 in the league. And for UMass, they try to go to 2-1 in CAA play. It's the CAA Game of the Week, and it's coming up next on LAC Sports Network. Black Sports Network is proud to present the CAA Game of the Week. Today, live from Garber Field in Amherst, Massachusetts, the UMass Minutemen play host to the Fairfield Stags. Welcome, everybody, inside the broadcast booth. Rob Engelke and Brendan Glasheen joining you for today's game. UMass at 1-1 one one in conference play. As for Fairfield at 0-2, desperation mode for this Fairfield team. They need to come out of here with the win somehow. They really do, and it's such a tough venue. UMass, normally there's a lot of people here. It's a very tight venue, so the fans are right on Tambia. But it's a beautiful day today. Fairfield's going to come out firing. It's going to be a very physical team. UMass is very physical, very good on the ground ball, so Fairfield's going to have to come out firing, come out with a lot of physicality, and take over this game. Yeah, Fairfield's got to win some face-offs today. That will be one of our keys to look out for. As for UMass, you're looking for them to score a little bit better. I am. I, I want their offense to be more aggressively because their defense and their face-offs has done so well, so I think they can really just take more chances offensively. They haven't had a great shooting percentage this year, but I think if they concentrate on that more and take higher quality shots, I think they'll be able to separate themselves from the other conference teams. On the defensive side for UMass, they look out for Colin Burke of Fairfield, a sophomore who's having an outstanding season. 20 goals, 10 assists. He's been their bread and butter offensively. He is. I, I mean, for the second year in a row. As just a freshman, he was the co-MVP for the CAA, which is really incredible. And so he's really been a big part of why the, the Fairfield program has improved so much. He's a high-volume shooter. He's had 100 shots this year, which is a lot. So I look for him to kind of continue that aggressiveness. But really, I mean, it's going to be a matchup between him and DJ Smith, the goaltender for UMass, to see how well he's able to get it in the back of the net. And at the face-off X for Fairfield, we might see a mixture of two guys. We'll see Joe Delasho. We'll also see Will Fox. They go up against Noah Rack, who is one of the best in the CAA, second in the conference when it comes to face-off percentage. He's a beast at the X. He is, and he's actually top 10 in the country in terms of face-off percentage. He's 60% nationally, which is really impressive. And so I think for him to kind of control the dual threat for Fairfield is really impressive. And so as you look at these two stats here, as Brendan said, you get Colin Burke, 20 goals, 10 assists on the year, 30 points leading the team. And then Noah Rack for UMass, 60% uh, face-off percentage, top 10 in the nation. He's going to be a huge factor today. Stags and a Minutemen ready to go at the face-off X. Beautiful day in Western Massachusetts, the campus of UMass Amherst. And there are today's officials. It will be Joe Delasho at the X for Fairfield against UMass's Noah Rack, the man we just spoke about. He's having an outstanding season, 60% conversion rate at the face-off X. Fairfield in the bright red, UMass in the home whites with the maroon trim. And the Minutemen with Noah Rack controlled the opening faceoff. Thanks again for joining us. Men's lacrosse, CAA game of the week. Fairfield at 0-2 in the league. They need a win after coming off back-to-back -back regular season titles. Inserted in the CAA back in 2015. As for UMass, went 0-5 in the league last year. 1-1 one one so far in 2017. A victory over Delaware to start conference play. A loss at number 16, Towson last week. Here's Gianni Biancan. He dumps it underneath. One of our keys today, Rob, was 
scoring for the Minutemen. They've got to find ways to attack the crease. They do. I mean, they, they average you know 30 or lower 30s just shots per game, which is very low for a good team and some of the better teams in the country. They're averaging over 40. So I think, you know, one thing we talked about, they're really good at faceoffs with no Iraq, and they got a great defensive team. So I think they just can afford to take more shots, afford, you know, some turnovers. So I think they can be more aggressive and try to get some points on the board. Here's Consoletti on the end line. Out of trouble, finds an open man. This first shot dodged off the left side. UMass keeps the possession alive. A stop in net for Tyler Bering, the senior goalkeeper for the Stags. A wind up, a shot, and a nice save. The shot coming from Biotkin and a stop for Bering. Fairfield in transition. Stags coming in after a tough loss to Drexel, 13 to 12 on the road in Philadelphia. A game in which the Stags cut the deficit to one goal twice, but just could not even the score. Fairfield on the season averaging just under eight and a half goals per game. Only 10 plus goals offensively in four of their 11 games this year, a three and eight record to show. DJ Smith in that first shot, bounces off the side of the pole and it's picked up by UMass. Valenza moves it along in transition for the Minutemen. Transition shot, bounces wide, but it's backed up by Grant Consoletti. Interesting pattern of events there. Just the way the lacrosse goal is set up, there's a post on the bottom there, and sometimes when you throw the ball and it hits that post, it pops up high, and you're not exactly sure if it actually crossed the goal line. So it was one of those weird shots there, and unfortunately it wasn't called a goal for, Fair, for, for Fairfield. UMass had the opportunity to transition, now second opportunity. First goal of the game for the Minutemen. Dan Muller, the redshirt senior. He's got 17 now on the season. Dan, Dan Muller, the leading point scorer for UMass. He gets a great feed from the midfielder. Dan Muller stops into it, and he shoots it up high with a ton of velocity. That's just a great shot by Muller. A step down threat from 15 yards out. Andy Copeland, the head coach of Fairfield in his ninth season, told us earlier this week that we have to look out for Ben Spencer, number nine for UMass, and 18, Dan Muller, the leading point scorer. Rob, like you mentioned, he has got some velocity on that release. Last year, these two teams played at Rafferty Stadium in Connecticut. 8-6 final, Fairfield got the victory. He's assisted by number two, Jeff Trainer. Jeff Trainer earns the assist, his fifth of the season, a freshman from Billerica, Massachusetts. Noah Rack with another face-off victory, and the Minutemen set things up. Yeah, and he won a clean again. That's the second one where it wasn't even a ground ball battle, so Noah Rack really feeling it so far today. Here's Tyler Bogart, one of the heartbeat guys offensively for the Minutemen under Greg Canella, the 23rd year head coach at Amherst. Muller makes a move, his shot denied. Bearing shifting downstairs to his left. I love this pace of play by UMass. You can tell already, we're already approaching 10 shots, which is above average for them. This is the type of high pace offense, high volume shots that I want to see out of them. Like you said, 34 shots a game, a low number for most teams in the country. UMass gets the backup. Defensively for Fairfield, we'll see Andrew Eidenschink, Logan Williamson, and Andrew Murrow. Here's Ben Spencer, weaving out of trouble, finds a man, this shot good! UMass fired up early.
Jeff Trainer from Ben Spencer. Just a great goal here. Ben Spencer drawing the double, fighting the guy on the backside. Trainer low to low to the far pipe. That's what happens when you take all these shots. You draw the defense out, you're able to beat your guy, you draw the double, and the field just opens up. Not to mention you're testing the goalie early and often, you're getting into his head. So UMass, UMass offense just playing really well early on in this game. Trainers 5'11", 185. He's played in nine games now this season for the Minutemen. Seven goals this year. He took three shots against Towson, but could not find the back of the net. Fairfield wins the faceoff. First victory for them at the X today. Yeah, I like what they did there. I think that the strategy against Rack is just try to create a ground ball battle, not let him win it clean, and just try to create a 3-3, you know, ground ball game where you get almost like a 50-50 ball. So I think that's a strategy that Fairfield needs to try and do at the faceoff X. Jake Nestitman and Joe Rodriguez. Rodriguez, number four in red, had a monster game against Drexel, a career high five goals. He joined us on the network this week. He was thrilled about the experience, but of course, he wants to see his team get out and get a victory. 0-2 in the league, and Fairfield already down 2-0. Dylan Beckwith, a freshman, looking for his freshman teammate. There's Travis Ford. Fairfield keeps moving it. Disrupted shot by Fleming. Another shot gets denied. Colin Burke tight roping the crease. You can see how much attention Colin Burke just garners. They're sliding very quick to him for good reason, but Colin Burke is also a very good feeder. So, you know, if dodging from behind, he's able to see the field and find the open guys, which he's done so already. Yeah, Burke had a lot of protection last year with an experienced but also older midfield. The limelight is on him now this year. A turnover for Fairfield and UMass feeling the home field advantage so far in this first quarter. We're more than six minutes in and the Minutemen lead 2-0. You mentioned the shots. UMass has already taken 7-5 on goal. Here's Muller coming over the midfield line. Bianchin shoveled it away, avoiding pressure, but a turnover for the Minutemen. They give it right back to the Stags. Samuel Murphy, the transition man. He had two ground balls against Drexel for Fairfield. That was a loss 13 to 12 last time out. Fairfield has taken the CAA by storm. Entered the league in 2015. Hosted the CAA tournament back in 2015, but on top of it, they've won back-to-back -back regular season titles. 0-2 is unfamiliar territory. Yeah, it's really been one of the, the cooler stories, you know, in Division I lacrosse. You know, you talk about the parity of the game, and I think Fairfield is such a good representative of that. Even, you know, eight, ten years ago, Fairfield just wasn't in the spot where they are today, particularly winning conference championships. So you really have to hand it to Coach Copeland, building the program back to where it was in the 70s and 80s. Um, so I, I really have to hand it to him. Colin Burke is one of the leading guys. Big reason why they're successful, you know, last year, and I think they're going to continue to improve going forward. And Copeland and the team enter the CAA in 2015. He wins CAA Coach of the Year. Not bad. Moments ago, you saw Burke fire a shot. That rifle was speared down by DJ Smith of UMass. The Minutemen have controlled the tempo in this first quarter, more than midway through. Muller possesses the ball a ton. Now it's Trainer, both Muller and Trainer with goals. Bogart survey. 
Looking to make a step. Defended by Logan Williamson of Fairfield. On the dish out by Buddy Carr. A turnover for the Minutemen. Burke slows the tempo for Fairfield. A couple of unforced, careless errors so far early on the game for both teams. It's not really what you want to see, you know, towards the end of the year, especially in the second half of the year. You expect these things in the first three games of the year when it's cold. But today it's nice out. Both these teams have played a ton of games. But I think it, it, the reflection is just, you know, it's such a big game for both teams. So I think they've got to get rid of the early jitters. Beckwith almost lost his footing. And Giorgio back out to Beckwith. At the top of the box. Some sloppiness offensively. Regathered by Nistitman. Burke's got it now for Fairfield. Burke, co-CAA player of the year last year. Shared the honor with Towson's Ryan Drenner. A turnover sniped away by Tyler Weeks of the UMass Minutemen, the senior from Andover, Massachusetts. Greg Canella, the head coach of UMass, says Tyler Weeks is one of their silent leaders, leads by example. But the Minutemen give it right back. Eidenschink in transition, hits his man, and the shot good, Dylan Beckwith. Puts Fairfield on the board. It's now two to one. This is a great play by the Fairfield defense, causing the turnover. The long pole grabs the ground ball, moves it all the way downfield, and almost does a no-look pass. He draws the defenseman upfield, passes it down to Burke, who's able to finish it. Just a great play by the defense transitioning into a goal. Andrew Eidenschenk, his second assist of the season. with 12 goals on the year. He leads the team in assists with 11. But he's assisted that time. UMass the other way. Bogart to respond. It's the power of face-offs, Brendan, honestly. You know, Fairfield finally gets their first run on the board. Feels like they can change the momentum a little bit. But then when you have a guy like Rack at the X, he's able to win it just pure. So clean, able to draw the defenseman and makes a great feed down to the attackman. Almost does again, almost like again, I'm looking the defenseman off, finds the guy at the pipe who's able to be, you know, able to be comfortable in that sort of tight situation and finish the ball. Another great opportunity on a fast break for UMass. And a precise release by Tyler Bogart. Team leading 21st goal of the season. He also leads the team in shots with 66 coming in. Another face-off victory for the Minutemen. This time off the ground ball. As Jake Marino grabbed it, the short stick midi. Four minutes to play, first quarter. CAA men's lacrosse game of the week. UMass at 1-1 one one in conference play. Fairfield 0-2, 3-8 overall. So both teams really need to pick things up in conference. They don't have the resumes out of the conference, but they played very challenging schedules. Both coaches admiring one another's ability to challenge themselves in the schedule. UMass in particular, three of their non-conference games to this date, when you look at the inside of the cross, top 10, three of those teams in the top 10. Ground ball loose. Fairfield's long pole. J.B. Smith couldn't reach for it. And Charlie O'Brien, a freshman for the Minutemen, gets rid of it. Rocket from the far side. St. Laurent, his third of the year. 
leads to a Fairfield timeout. The Minutemen have scored the game's four of five total goals. We'll step aside from Garber Field in Amherst, Massachusetts. It's been all UMass on the Cross Sports Network. The next CAA Women's Game of the Week comes your way on Friday, April 21st, when James Madison heads to Philadelphia to take on Drexel live at 5 p.m. Eastern. But the CAA pregame show beginning at 4.30 Eastern time, the CAA Game of the Week is only on LAX Sports Network. Rob Engelke alongside Brendan Glasheen, thank you for joining us today at beautiful Garber Field in Amherst, Massachusetts, campus of the UMass Minutemen. Well, the students, a lot of them going home for holiday break this weekend, the Easter and Passover holidays upon us. But I'll tell you what, UMass has come out fired up. They have not fell asleep. They are playing like a hungry team in conference play. They have, and no, no rack like we thought came out firing today, winning faceoffs cleanly. I'm really impressed by the UMass midfield play right now. The, the top two scorers for UMass are their attackmen. And they're having their midfielders really doing all the all the, the heavy work today, which which you love to see. It's just the guys a little bit lower down the stat sheet contributing. So I think that's a great sign for Coach Canella and UMass. Two names to point out: Ben Spencer, a sophomore from Danville, California. He was a 2016 CAA All Rookie. Jeff Trainer has scored a goal. He also has an assist today. Both have contributed early. Fairfield's second face-off victory. Rack has four of them for UMass. Take a look at the Stags resume from earlier in the season. Number two, Penn State was on the schedule, a 9-8 loss about a month ago now. Some other tough ones on the schedule, Rutgers, Stony Brook, a double overtime loss to Yale. It's felt like Fairfield is right there. They're knocking on the door. Andy Copeland told us we wanted to go into this offseason this prior to this season and make a challenging schedule to take that next step after back-to-back -back regular season titles in the CAA. And I think they're still young. I mean, they're definitely inexperienced, not used to that type of success. And, uh, you know, it, it's tough to continually do that when you're rebuilding the program. So I think it's just some growing pains for Coach Copeland. Beckwith snatches the ground ball, plucked away, though, by UMass. Burke is getting swarmed, by the way. Two flags come out. Here are the Minutemen in transition. Shot gets speared back towards us. And a man falling down is Stittman, the senior for Fairfield. It is Stagg's ball. That flag likely down. Couldn't catch the player a second ago, but flags came flying after some contact. Yeah, again, some more careless errors on offense for Fairfield. And it, it's something that I know Coach Copeland has probably tried to focus on. They haven't had that much of a, a plague this year. They have 130 turnovers on the year. That's not terrible. Um, but early on in this game for such a young offense that's looking to improve, it's not what Coach Copeland wants to see, and now some more penalties.
Welcome back to Garber Field in Amherst. Four to one to score at the end of the first quarter in favor of UMass. LSN Live is the place to hang out, have fun, and talk lacrosse. The LAC Sports Network crew delivers a fresh and entertaining take on the most interesting storylines in lacrosse. It's LSN Live Thursday through Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern only on LAC Sports Network. Brendan Glasheen alongside Robert Engelke. Thank you for joining us today. Minutemen really controlling the tempo of this one, especially in the shot department. They really have the, the first quarter, the stat sheet reads Massachusetts with three, Fairfield with five. And one big reason has been Rack. Noah Rack, the faceoff guy for UMass, has been highly successful. He's won four of six faceoffs today. But I think the other thing, and I'm sure Coach Copeland talked about it, at the break of the first quarter was the careless errors, the unforced errors by Fairfield, specifically on the on the offensive side. So they gotta limit those. They gotta take you know take care of the ball and get good quality shots. Fairfield with three turnovers in the first quarter. UMass with four. Rack was our man to watch today for the Minutemen. UMass at one and one in league play. That one conference win, the opener against Delaware. Rack won 15 of 18 faceoffs. Pretty gutsy performance here at Garber Field. A shot from the top of the box by Carr. He picks it up. Pardon me, that was St. Laurent. Backed up by the Minutemen. They're shooting on the left here. Stags on the right. Great save by DJ Smith. Tough save to make. But it looked like a, a moving pick there. So then another opportunity for UMass. They've had a couple of second chance opportunities offensively. Great screen by St. Laurent. Feed to the crease. Man goes down, that was Williamson, the defenseman. St. Lorenz swings it, shot off the top of the bar. UMass kill, still has possession, a step down shot for Muller. Gathered by the Minutemen. And snatched away, the ground ball picked up by the Stags. Good looks there for the Minutemen. What an offensive possession there for UMass. Fight for the ground ball. Rinkus going for it, but the Stags have possession. Stags are in jeopardy of falling to 0-3 in the league after a regular season title in 2015 and 2016. Transition for the Minutemen, got ahead of themselves a little bit. Bogart mishandles the outlet pass. Stags have it back. Both teams trading turnovers, just botched passes, just regular catch and throwing, rudimental catch and throwing that they're having a tough time with. There was some more of that in the first quarter. Both teams got to limit that. You know, at the end of the day, you know, a good stat sheet, a, a good stat to look at is unforced turnovers, and the team that's able to limit those, no matter what, is going to have a better chance of winning. Would you say it's fair, though, that for Greg Canella, head coach of UMass, and for Andy Copeland, the head coach at Fairfield, at least there's intensity. These guys are playing like this is a playoff game. But you can see that there's some jitters here, that they're controlling the ball. No, it is for sure. And I mean, both teams have had a tough year, so it's great to see that both teams came out to play and they're hungry for the win. 4-1 lead. It's UMass currently leading. Burke has been sort of quiet early on. His shot wide, but ground ball plucked away by Fairfield. Ford loops it left, a shot good. There's Joe Rodriguez. He had five last game against Drexel, and that's his first today. Fairfield with it, too. Great possession by the Fairfield Stags, able to move the ball around. Colin Burke gets his touches. They chase the ball back, and this is just a great look. It's almost like a dummy dodge, dodging with your head up, find the guy in the backside wide open who's able to get it out of the stick very quickly. That's such a big thing that's taught in lacrosse now offensively. It's not just this big windup, but getting the ball out of your stick very quickly, limiting the time for the goaltender to see it. Great job by the Fairfield offense. For Rodriguez, that is goal number 12 of the season. One of his five goals against Drexel last game was actually awarded LSN play of the week. It was a no-look backhanded shot. Fairfield did lose the game though, 13-12. UMass ground ball, nicely done by Rinkus. A timeout, though, for Greg Canella and the Minutemen. 
We'll step aside from Garber Field in Amherst, Massachusetts. It's a two goal cushion for the Minutemen on the Fairfield Stacks. It's the CAA Men's Lacrosse Game of the Week on Lack Sports Network. We'll be back. Don't forget the CAA semifinals are coming to Lack Sports Network. See the top four teams from the regular season square off for the right to be the tournament champion and earn an automatic bird to the NCAA tournament. The men's semifinals are set for May 4th with a regular season champion acting as the host. The women's tournament gets underway on May 5th at Towson University. See all four games live and exclusively on Lack Sports Network. The CAA Game of the Week on Lack Sports Network. It's all Laxess. Two teams here today on the men's side, UMass and Fairfield. Minutemen, one and one in the league. Fairfield at 0 and 2. These two teams are in a tough spot to have any chance of hosting. It might be Towson, it could be Hofstra, number two team in the country. Towson at number 16. We'll see those two teams at the end of the year clash. Right now it's been the Minutemen, a big goal for Rodriguez in Fairfield moments ago. Feed to the crease, another shot, a late push from behind. <laughs> UMass now leads five to two. An and one play. <laughs> Just a more great midfield play. A dummy dodge, mooches it to the backside. Trainer with his head up again, feeding it to the crease. A great handle by the attackman. Really impressed by these midfielders right now. And Buddy Carr able to handle it in traffic, finishing it low to high shot within that proximity. Almost impossible for Barrick to save. Great job by the UMass offense once again. Buddy Carr, number 12 of the season. He's a junior from Exeter, New Hampshire. He has 17 points now in the last nine games. He has at least one point now in all 11 games for UMass this year. Minutemen getting contributions up and down the roster. Rackets beat this time on the faceoff X. Williamson running away from trouble in a timeout for the Stags. Andy Copeland. The head coach wants to pause action. And we'll keep it here with just over 11 minutes to go in this first half. It's been a 1-1 second quarter, but UMass again has continued their outplay. They're outplaying Fairfield, but I really, you have to give some credit to Tyler Baring and goal for Fairfield. He was being peppered with shots with, to start the second quarter. He was up to the task, started making a few saves. Fairfield was able to answer and create a goal, but you know the, the ground ball battle has been the advantage to UMass. The Fairfield, the, the face off battle has been a, an advantage for UMass. So those type of things, time of possession certainly has been an advantage for UMass. So those type of things, it makes it tough for any team to make a comeback. And that last offensive possession for UMass is just outstanding. Great, great assisted goal. Yeah, Baring last year was on the CAA first team. The goalkeeper had also had a monster game against these Minutemen. Last year he had 19 saves in the 8-6 victory for the Stags. He was awarded inside lacrosse defensive player of the week for that performance. One other thing to point out, we discussed 
mightily about Colin Burke, the offensive scoring punch for Fairfield this year. He has 20 goals on the Tom watch list for the second straight year. You're impressed with Isaac Paparo's defense. He's of the UMass defense number 15. Yeah, it's a fun matchup to watch. You got two sophomores playing against each other. Uh, Colin Burke obviously garners a lot of attention, and it's really impressive that Coach Canella gave him that, that assignment. So it's the Minutemen working offensively on the left side of Garber Field. Amherst, Massachusetts, the site. <laughs> a crazy turn of events there. Fairfield calls the timeout. They probably want to settle their offense, and I love this move by Coach Canal. He comes out and doubles the guy with the ball. That's such an aggressive move. You got to hand to Coach Canella, forces the turnover, and now they have the ball back on offense. Ten seconds away from getting back to full strength, Fairfield. Trainer's shot, a one bouncer. Spencer, pardon me, gets it from Trainer. They do a little switcheroo. They helped each other out back in the first quarter. And now it's the opposite. Spencer scores his eighth of the season. I'm really impressed by these two freshmen on UMass. They've had a great game so far, getting involved on the goaling and assisting side. This is a shot from, you know, close to 17 yards. Just a big body midfielder winding up, bounce shot. Just an incredible shot, almost hitting the pipe there. UMass offense just clicking on all cylinders. So a four goal lead for the Minutemen. Spencer had two assists last game against Towson. No goals, he picks up a goal here, his eighth of the year. UMass goal. Had 12 goals all of last season. His father, Ted, actually played for UMass. Ben Spencer, Ted Spencer, played for UMass back in the 80s. Living up to the family line. And Minutemen living up to the hype, trying to go to two and one in the league. On top by four goals against the Fairfield Stags with under 10 minutes to play the first half. Each time it feels like Fairfield's getting back in the game. UMass quells the enthusiasm immediately. Yeah, it's impressive. Uh, you know, Fairfield's still trying to figure out their strategy on offense, what they want to do. They, they just haven't had the ball much this game. Fairfield also has two penalties, none for UMass so far. Ford shot, disrupted. UMass ground ball. Remember, Fairfield's got two attackmen that are freshmen, Travis Ford, Dylan Beckwith. Their responsibility is to play off of the sophomore, Colin Burke, who shared CAA Player of the Year honors a year ago. Has it been smooth so far for Fairfield? St. Loren will slow it down for UMass. And it looks like Fairfield is actually switching into a zone on defense, trying to catch the UMass offense off guard a little bit, switch things up, because the UMass offense has just been able to pick apart the defense so far. So I like the move by Coach Copeland switching it up on defense. Coach Copeland told us they'll mix up man and zone defensively, account for the shooters that UMass has, in particular Spencer and Muller, two step down guys. There was Muller a second ago, number 18. He has possession now, matched up with Rodriguez. So what happens is, is when you go into a zone on defense, you almost allow outside shots. You allow the 10 to 15 yard shots. So they're really have, gonna have to, you know, hold on to Baring, who's been pretty good between the pipes so far. Bogart turns it over. Fairfield in transition. This Dittman. Gets it back and throws up the hand. He wants to slow it up. Fairfield runs it set. Couple of substitutions for Coach Copeland. Dave Fleming has it. Pass to Beckwith, it trickles away, but he grabs it. Now it's off to Burke. 
Brandon, we have a flag down here. UMass is actually offside, so Fairfield is playing six on seven right now as the flag is down. Burke has been held scoreless so far today. Ford, top of the box, curls it back for Fleming. They pick and roll, shot to the left. Smith the save. And a whistle comes in. I think that flag will now be accounted for. Personnel changes on both sides. New players spill on out. This is a big opportunity for Fairfield. These type of man up opportunities are big momentum swings. I really want to make sure Fairfield gets a good quality shot. You know, they can't afford this, you know, just having an outside shot here. They really need a challenge. DJ Smith, I'd love to see something on the doorstep. Be patient and not, you know, do a careless shot from outside 15 yards. So it's the short stick D Mitty, Anthony Real, who is going to sit for 30 seconds. Fairfield this year, not very good on the man up. Just nine for 31, that's 29%. The shot good. There's Burke, his first today. He finds the upper right 90. Big one for the Stags. Big goal for the Stags. Great job by the offense. Big opportunity for them on having the man up. Great ball movement, catching it out, you know, pretty much moving the ball around on both sides of the field. UMass is just not able to make that one more rotation. Colin Burke takes advantage of the UMass defense, sleeping on that, comes around and finishes the goal. Burke's team leading, 21st goal. Never mind, did he win? Co-player of the year last year, but he was also, as you can imagine, the rookie of the year in the CAA. Samuel Murphy loops it underneath. Coming up on six minutes to play in the first half. Burke trying to get rid of it, falls to the floor. Flag comes in just in front of the goal. And it will be a penalty against UMass. I love that play by Colin Burke. Just a kid trying to make the play, trying to draw something, trying to create something. I love that time to dodge as an attackman. You win the face off, you get the ball behind, the midfield is changing up. And at that point, it's almost kind of like a slow break and it's like a three on three. The defensemen are playing against the attackmen. And you can have your one-on-one -on -one matchups which are so tough to isolate in a six on six you know, scenario. So Colin Burke taking advantage of it. Great dodge and drawing the foul. It's a one minute penalty against the same man we called a minute ago. That was real. Check that, Shane Rinkus, a junior from Pembroke, Massachusetts. fairfield has got 40 seconds now on the man up. Stick goes flying in the air over the blue line, regathered by the Stags. Burke gets rid of it quickly. But the Stags back it up. Quick look to the clock, 24 seconds in the man up. Fairfield backs up again. Sticks are going everywhere. Everyone's going nuts. Burke possesses once more. Feed to the crease. An attempt behind the back. Nothing doing. Ground ball for the Minutemen. But a turnover. And Coach Canella wants to talk on the Minutemen sideline to our left. Some sloppy lacrosse on both sides, missed passes, missed clears. Another big opportunity for Fairfield on offense, trying to limit this deficit. 6-3 the score, UMass doubling Fairfield. We have about five minutes to go in this first half. Stags trying to halt a three-game losing streak and more importantly, get their first CAA win of the season. And for the Minutemen, last year not winning a single CAA game, it must be sort of relieving for Greg Canella to not only have a one and one record this year, but a chance to go to two and one. Good day to have the dog outside, taking in some lacrosse. 
This is what lacrosse weather is all about. Unfortunately, they start the season so early nowadays, and you're playing in snow, you're playing in cold weather. I know I'm not a cold weather guy, um, so I was always looking forward to, to April coming around. This is, this is great lacrosse stuff. Um, you see people hanging out in the hill back here. It's a great setting. You know something, too? They did a great job with this field turf that was installed prior to last year. This is the same turf they use at Loyola, Maryland, and the Baltimore Ravens. So Garber Field is looking in excellent shape. Mid-season form, without question, but we still just have a few games to go. Next week, UMass is at Hofstra. Tough task. Number two team in the country on Long Island. And then for the Minutemen, or pardon, for the Stags, they are heading to UMass, heading to Towson for a home game. Finish the year with Towson and Delaware at home. Hard to sleep in the CAA nowadays. It's yep. really impressive what, you know, all these teams in this conference have done. You know, even Fairfield, what they've done the past three years. UMass is a storied program, been around for a while. And you have to hand it to Coach Tierney at Hofstra and, and, and the Towson team, what they did last year as well. So, you know, a lot of these teams are just being really competitive. It's just great for the game and great for the conference. And Fairfield has a hand in that discussion when it comes to Hofstra and Towson. Last year, Fairfield beat Hofstra in the CAA tourney semis and then lost 4-2 to two to Towson in the finals. Play resumes, 6-3 UMass lead. Burke makes a step, attempting to dodge on the defender. It's Paparo who has hovered him most of this game. Fleming, a spin, had an opening for a moment. The Stittman fires, and the upper left 90 is true with the goal. It's now just six to four. You're leaving for the Stittman, pardon me. He had eight shots against Drexel last week, no goals. He picks up a goal here, number eight of the year. Yeah, for such a young team offensively for Fairfield, uh, it's great to see some senior leadership step up in this sort of scenario. The midfielder just stepping up, leaning into the short stick midfielder, shooting a top shelf and getting by DJ Smith. Ms. Dittman, a senior, captain this year, a captain last year. His grandfather was a former NBA draft pick in the 1950s by the Syracuse Nationals. We're approaching four minutes to go, first half, UMass back up just two. The lead was once four, six to two. Talked about the shot differential. At one point, it was UMass in favor by 10, 17, seven. Now Fairfield's clinged within five, 19, 14. Tough shot from Ford with defenders hanging on him. Does get backed up. The other thing that Fairfield has picked up on is now they've won two faceoffs in a row. Good point. Um, or at least gotten the ball back after goals in a row. So that's huge. The, you know, time, possession, momentum, those things are, are just so important. And Fairfield offense, you can see, is just clicking. Yeah, it's now just 7 5 in terms of faceoff wins in favor of UMass. A whistle. Uncaused turnover. And UMass has it back. But it's turned back over, a failed clear. Dish middle. Ford hits Burke. He slowly resets. That was just a great ride by the Fairfield attack. I'd love to see that out of the young kids, just trying to get the ball back, which is so huge. But that's a second, at least a second consecutive botch clear from UMass. But Fairfield unfortunately turning it over. Beckwith overruns the pass by Dave Fleming. It's been a sloppy half in terms of the turnover department. We're now at a total of 17 turnovers, nine for UMass, eight for Fairfield. Both team, both teams, I should say, have done their fair share. Yeah, I'd imagine UMass gonna slow the ball down a little bit. They've played a ton of defense in this quarter. Give those guys a breather a little bit. You know, coming into the game, Fairfield averaging just under 12 turnovers a game, UMass just over 12. Both teams enormously over their season rates. Trainer, a great dump, but the shot by Bogart off the mark, he had a tough transition.
Trainer off the screen. Gets it back for Muller. Still that zone look for Fairfield defensively. Bogart looking for a hole. Trainer tees up, but airmails the shot. Those are the shots that Fairfield is willing to give up. They'll let you shoot from 10 to 12, but they sure don't want you to shoot around the goal, pro close proximity. They think that Baring is be able to save those from 10 to 12, the ones that he can see. Ground ball for UMass. Another shot whistling by the net. That one was Trainer. Minute 22 to go, first half, and UMass looking to pad its lead once more, only up two. Pass middle, cut deflected, grabbed by Muller. Muller sees a double team, out, Bogart, shot, score! The sophomore from Newton. Second one today in the minute bat by three. Just relentlessness out of the UMass offense. Dodging, great move here, drawing, making the defense rotate. The rotation doesn't come fast enough. And Bogart going low to high. Stick side high though, I would imagine that's one bearing wants back. But you have to hand it to the UMass offense, staying with it, staying aggressive and just some more aggressive shooting. You gotta hand it to the offense. Bogart's now got 21 points in his last seven games. This sophomore riding high for the Minutemen. Minute to play in the first half. A flag comes soaring out in front of us. Ground ball gets pounced around by Williamson. Transition for Fairfield. Bogart spent some time in Massachusetts and New Hampshire for his high school play. He played at Catholic Memorial as well as Brewster Academy. And we're getting signals here in front of us about the penalty. It'll be a 30 second penalty against UMass. And we have Fairfield's third man up opportunity of this first half. They got to do a better job in this man up. They were unsuccessful in their last try. They did a great job on the first one, able to get the defense to rotate and Burke coming from behind, but I think UMass has, catch, has caught on to that. The need to find another way to get a shot on the doorstep. Yeah, it's Noah Rack who gets penalized. It's about a 11 second difference, game clock and the man up clock. A turnover though by the Stags. Not pleased with that call. I actually want to hand it to the UMass defense on that one, just anticipating the pass, reaching out their stick is able to deflect it and then forcing the call. Five seconds, UMass trying to score quickly here. Two seconds, Muller couldn't get it off. First half action in the books at Garber Field in Amherst. In the Minutemen cling to a three goal lead on Fairfield, seven to four. UMass came ready to play, outshot Fairfield in that first half. We'll be joined by the head coach, Greg Canella in just a moment. Came out hungry though. They did, they, they came out firing, they're winning face-offs, they were shooting early and often which is exactly what you want to see from your from your team if you're Coach Canella. And then their defense has just done a really good job of containing Colin Burke. 7-4 lead, you took a look at the shots, and it's 23-16 in favor of the Minutemen. We'll now have the head coach of the Minutemen join us, Greg Canella. Thanks so much, Coach, for your time. You guys really came out hungry to start out this contest, out shooting Fairfield by seven. Five more shots on goal. What did you like most about your team's aggressiveness in that first half? Uh, like you said, they were just aggressive, uh, going for it, trying to trying to score as many goals as they could, um, but playing with a lot of heart. So that, that's what we need to do for sure. 
Yeah, no, a ton of shots out of you in the first half, Coach Canella. I thought that was exactly one of my keys for the game today. And the other thing is you guys have been able to contain Colin Burke. Uh, number 15, Paparo's done a great job on him. Can you just talk about him for a little bit? Yeah, I mean, uh, Isaac's had a great year. He's, he's uh, a sophomore now. He was really good last year as well for us. Uh, you can't stop Colin Burke. You just have to try to slow him down. He's too good of a player. So uh, Isaac will have his hands full the rest of the game. Coach, last thing for you here. How do you clean things up in that second half? Each team had nine turnovers. There was some jitters out there. It's a really tightly contested game. Yeah. Both teams need it. How do you clean things yeah, up here? Yeah, just ask you guys to be composed. You know, we fouled too many times in the quarter. Uh, especially there at the end. Uh, we threw the ball away, like you said. Just just not a good quarter. You know, we, we weren't in sync on offense. They zoned us, you know, so uh, they threw a monkey wrench at us as well. UMass head coach Greg Canella, thanks so much. Thank you, guys. His Minutemen currently leading 7-4 to four here on the campus of UMass. Amherst Garber Field is the site of today's game. We'll be back for second half coverage. Our score at the half at Garber Field, UMass 7, Fairfield 4. We'll be back in a few minutes for the second half, but first an update on everything that's happening on this busy Saturday in College Lacrosse. We'll send it back to the LSM Broadcast Center. Back at Garber Field on the campus of UMass Amherst, the Minutemen lead the Fairfield Stag 7-4, joined by the Fairfield head coach, Andy Copeland. Hey, coach, Colin Burke does score a goal in that first half. How do you sort of adjust to get him more open because the defense of UMass swarming around him? Yeah, I mean, you get to this stage of the season, I mean, UMass knows us and we know them pretty well. I just think uh, right now it's boiled down to execution a little bit. They had a, they had a pretty fast start and they won some draws early and We've since made some adjustments to allow us a little bit more possession time and allow us to hopefully get into a little bit more of an offensive rhythm. But they've done a great job on Colin. I think his one and only goal has been on the EMO right now. And uh, and they've just done a good job there. So we just have to continue to kind of share the ball, maybe be a little bit more patient with our possessions. I think we're forcing the issue a little bit, and sometimes with a young offense. And, um, you know, when you get behind, that guy that kind of tends to take over. So we just got to trust in the systems and each other and execute our way through this. Coach, thanks for the time. Best of luck in the second half. Thanks, guys. This is our CAA men's lacrosse game of the week. We take a look at the stats from that first half, Rob. And again, the shot advantage for UMass stood out. Both teams had nine turnovers too. Yeah, it was a sloppy first half. Both teams, even on, you know, on, on their clears and just on the offensive side, both teams returned the ball over. So the team that's able to limit that, I think in the second half is gonna have a huge advantage. Fairfield needs to find a way to, to limit the peppering that they that the UMass offense has done on, on bearing. Um, and then the other thing is Fairfield needs to needs to find a way on offense to start clicking. Uh, they've had a few opportunities on man up that have been unsuccessful, uh, but they need to find other ways on six on six to generate offense. As Coach Copeland just told us, Burke's goal was a man up goal, his fourth man up goal of the season. At the face off X, UMass won seven of 13, six face-off wins as Will Fox is now at the X for Fairfield, number 12 in red. Fox comes away with this one. Loose for a moment outside the yellow circle. UMass controls for just a moment. And now the Minutemen have it, another ground ball stabbed by Tyler Weeks, one of the captains. Fox certainly brings a lot of size against UMass Noah Rack. <laughs> Minutemen cross the midway line. More zone from Fairfield defensively. St. Laurent has it now outside the box. You like to call here staying in zone? I do, it's been successful as part of the reason why they were able to turn the momentum a little bit. I think, you know, they're, they're relying on bearing a lot if they go into the zone, who has been playing well, but let in a couple that I think he wanted to have back, um, particularly the goal by Bogart towards the end of the second quarter. Um, but it's been successful, so you might as well stick to what you know and what's been doing, what, what's, what's been working. 
Biancan just attempted a double bounce shot. It was wide of the net. Muller outlets. Biancan gets it back. Dump underneath, Bogart gets whacked on the side of his helmet. It was a crossing pattern by two Fairfield defenders. But he rises to his feet, he's okay. Here's a look out of the game. You can see how the zone, it looks for a second offensively, like you're getting the defense to rotate, but really it's six on six, all the guys are there. And it just generates a lot of confusion for the offense. The, de the defenseman there for Fairfield is able to get into the passing lane and almost cause a turnover. Yeah, they overload the ball side. Here's St. Laurent. Dumps it underneath the end line. Biankin steps into one, but air mails the shot. Biankin of Ontario, Stony Creek, a senior. He was on the Team Ontario national title teams in 2010 and 2011. There's a goal for Bogart, his third of the afternoon. This is a great play by the UMass offense. Catching the Fairfield defense sleeping a little bit. This was right off the end line, right off a shot. Bogart gets the ball. The short stick probably extended it too far given that you're in a zone. He's able to beat him just through an individual effort, an unassisted great goal by Bogart, his third of the day. Goes down low and sweeps it by Tyler Baring, the senior goalkeeper for Fairfield. Fairfield wins its first face-off of the second half. A three-goal day for Bolgard. He had one goal against Towson last time out. He has a three-goal game today. 23 total in 2017. He's just a sophomore. A sophomore on either side dominating the scoring for their respective teams. Bogart for UMass and Colin Burke for Fairfield. Here's Rodriguez off a monster game last week against Drexel. Five goals, has won today. Fleming back to Burke. Burke back pedals to survey the defense. Three minutes into this third quarter. A breeze starting to pick up at Garber Field. A Stittman over to Fleming. Ford has the long pole defending. Fans begging for the shot clock. The UMass fans getting impatient with the Fairfield offensive movement here. This is really great possession on both sides. This is a great example of just good lacrosse. The ball is moving, but you gotta hand it to the UMass defense. They're just sliding all over the place, being aggressive. Burke getting hunted. Gets rid of it, a step down shot. But a stuff for DJ Smith. What a defensive possession for UMass. Really, the guys were just sliding all over the place. The two and third slide were there. They were covering for each other. Capped with a great save by DJ Smith. He hasn't seen too many shots today, but he was up to the task on that one. Yeah, nine shots on goal for Fairfield, just four goals. DJ Smith, one of three captains for the Minutemen. He's had double-digit saves in seven of UMass games this year. Played just the first half on the road against Towson. Talking with the head coach, Greg Canella, this week. It wasn't because DJ underperformed. He just wanted the spark from his team. Sometimes you make that long voyage to Johnny United Stadium, he needs in a wrinkle of some sort. Smith has responded today, playing solid. UMass doubling Fairfield. Coming up on five minutes into the third quarter. Trainers had a great game. Number two for the Minutemen, Spencer, number nine, a freshman and sophomore, respectively. They've carried the load so far today. Yeah, I think Trainer was probably my MVP of the first half. Three assists. Bounce shot home. Guess who? Yeah. 
trainer seeming to come out of nowhere. Right on cue. Right on cue. Really, I, I mean, he's only had eight points on the earth. I think he had six and four in the year so far. Right. And this is just great ball movement. A little lackadaisical on defense by Fairfield. But you have to hand it to UMass. The ex attackman keeping his head up. And Trainer, just great handles. I can't tell you how tough that is in Crow's proximity with your right hand able to use the leverage and get around the goalie like that. It's a tough shot, so you got to hand it to the kid. I'm impressed. Timing is everything, Rob. Just as you gloat about Trainer's performance in the first half, he comes up with his first second half goal here at Garber Field. And the Minutemen have their largest lead today. Five goals, nine to four, with 9.36 on the clock in the third. Trainer's just a freshman. He's a two-time CAA Rookie of the Week. He had the game-winning goal against Delaware, the first conference win of the season, the only conference win of the season for UMass, so he's played in the spotlight, considering that was a big victory against the Delaware Blueheads team a couple weeks back. Fairfield trying to make some noise, in jeopardy of going to 0-3 in the league. Unfamiliar territory for Andy Copeland and company. Yeah, they need to find a way offensively just to beat their one-on-one -on -one matchups and find guys on the backside. They have one goal on man up. Other than that, they haven't had too many, you know, great opportunities. They've had a lot of shots like that from 15, um, and DJ Smith's been up to the task. Back up by Colin Burke. Well, to Stittman, who just fired that shot. He had eight shot attempts, just two of them on goal against Drexel last week. Here's Rodriguez, had a big day last week, deflected, and to stop again for Smith. A race for the backup, it does go to Fairfield. Yeah, it's a second save in a row for DJ Smith that, you know, not a lot of goalies in the country are gonna save, so you gotta hand it to him. Just the stone wall in between the pipes right now. Smith, another save. Last year against Fairfield, Smith only played three minutes. He gets the nod, of course, this year, having an excellent senior season, a captain. Logan Williamson, the defenseman in transition for the Stags. Well, moments ago, we saw Fairfield have a very lengthy possession, slow things down. UMass held the fort down defensively. At what point? Does Coach Copeland say, okay, we, we need to sort of speed things up? Still a lot of game time left, but it is a five-goal deficit. I think they have to start doing it now because I think the long, the six-on-six six possessions right now just it has been heavily weighted to UMass. I'm, I have to hand it to them. I'm really impressed by the defense. They're sliding incredibly well, recovering. And then at the end of the day, DJ Smith has been saving things. So Fairfield needs to find opportunities whether it's man up or slow break, fast break, and they need to push the ball and find, you know, advantage situations. Burke trying to make something happen. Defended tightly a moment ago by Valenza. Luke Valenza, a junior from Foxborough, Massachusetts. And then Paparo was hovering him in the first half. Under seven minutes to go, third quarter. We're more than midway through. Valenza hovering on Burke again. Travis Ford. Dump to Burke, he's surveying. Looking to feed it. Ford lines up, but it's wide right. It actually looks like UMass is in some form of a zone now. They're passing guys over once their zone is passed. So you're seeing, you're seeing a little bit of zone defense from both sides right now. Fleming, little fake, got the step on the shoulder. The Stittman grabs it after some pressure. More outlets by the Stags. 
Fleming comes over to set his screen to Stittman, triple team, his shot, Smith jumping to his right to save. And it's backed up by UMass. The sideline is fired up. A little bit of a stagnant offense, but able to generate a shot. DJ Smith making split saves all over the place, and then the hustle play by the defenseman on the backside, able to turn the ball over UMass again. The defense just up to the task, and DJ Smith really just making saves, looking like a you know a, a all American at the moment. Again, like we told you, double-digit saves in seven of ten games for DJ Smith. He played his high school across at Billerica High School, a four-year MVC champion. That's the Merrimack Valley Conference. Five minutes to play in the third. UMass with possession, feed middle. Eyes off the prize, though, for a moment. That was Consoletti who mishandled the pass. Well, a break for Fairfield. UMass could have made it six. Baring flings it back to Iden Schenk, the senior. Turnover by the Stags. And a rocket from up top by Muller. Does get backed up though by the Minutemen. Not sure what happened there in terms of the transition. Offsides by Fairfield. Okay. You know, a little bit of, uh, of UMass doing a great job on the, on, the, on the ride, not providing too many open guys on Fairfield, and just a miscommunication by the pole in the midfield. They're both guys going over. Offsides by Fairfield, UMass gets the ball back. Consoletti gets faced up by Samuel Murphy of Fairfield. Coach Canella compliments Grant Consoletti. He's a very composed player. And UMass just turned it right back over to Fairfield. And that word composed must have been preached by Greg Canella. He joined us moments before heading to the locker room at halftime. Got to do the best you can, especially in these types of games. Highly intense. Has a lot of implications in terms of how the rest of the season shakes out. Including today, three games left in the regular season for both teams. With Towson and Hofstra at the top of the CAA, the question is how do the bottom four spots fill out with Delaware, these two teams, and Drexel? Spun left for Ford. Fleming making a move. Beckwith gets rid of it. Now it's Rodriguez. Off the screen. Open man is Stittman wide left. You mess back in their man-to-man -man offense, which I actually like. I think they've been sliding well. Their slide packages seem to be on point. Fairfield just can't find a way to get it past DJ Smith right now. They're actually finding some quality shots here and there. I actually think they need to start shooting high because DJ Smith seems to have their number low. The younger players for Fairfield, Dylan Beck with Travis Ford on the attack, they have not risen the same as the UMass young players have today. Ford angling, dump low, Smith diving down, no initial shot. Ground ball plucked away by Fairfield, ball loose. Smothered for a moment, Smith comes away with it. And the man down there was Beckwith for Fairfield. A flag comes in from the left side official. With under two to play in the third. Fairfield has not scored in this third quarter. It's a 2-0 UMass advantage in the third. Dish left, Consoletti flips it back out to Muller. Oh 
The first half was a story of UMass's offense just firing all cylinders, a ton of shots. The second half is the defense anchored by DJ Smith. Just, in, you know, it, it's just a great story for the coach to tell when both sides of the field can contribute and be a huge part of, of a winning effort. Right now up 9-4, game's certainly not over, but they're playing really well on both sides of the field. Trainer, a huge factor, number two for UMass, as well as Spencer. And 55 seconds on the clock here in the third. You mentioned the shot advantage. It's now just a one-shot advantage in the game for UMass, 28 to 27. At the end of the first quarter, it was 13-5 Minutemen. At the end of the first half, it was 23-16 Massachusetts. And unfortunately, Fairfield has nothing to say for it. This third quarter, they're down 0-2. So I, I think it's really one of, uh, it's, it's a reflection of how well DJ Smith is, has played. To Colin Burke, the leading scorer for Fairfield, penalized for 30 seconds, interference, and a man up chance for UMass. They love a goal to go up six, heading to the fourth quarter. Step down shot, it's wide. Muller again. He does have the green light many times. He had 10 shots in the Towson game last week. He scored three goals. As one today. Spencer off the mark. Muller there to back it up. So Fairfield does its job. Back to full strength with 22 seconds on the clock. Trainer, the freshman, stellar today. He's gonna make a move. Three seconds, and that's it. Spencer could not find an angle. Three quarters in the books at Garber Field in Amherst, Massachusetts. UMass 9, Fairfield 4. It's the CAA Men's Lacrosse Game of the Week on LAC Sports Network. Come back for the fourth. Tune in to Lacrosse Now face off as LSN analyst Josh Hawkins and Chris Marshall go toe to toe, debating and dissecting the biggest stories in the game. It's the hottest takes on the hottest topics, Lacrosse Now face off Thursday through Monday, right here on Lacrosse Sports Network. Beautiful spring day, Saturday afternoon in Amherst, Massachusetts. The Minutemen currently lead nine to four, entering the fourth quarter. Rob Engelke alongside Brendan Clashine with you. Thanks for joining us for the CAA Men's Lacrosse Game of the Week. Will Fox wins the face off for Fairfield. Let's see what the Stags are made of here offensively. Winning the ground ball battle, they now have more face-off wins than the Minutemen. Yeah, they've done a great job coming out in this third quarter, and they've been able to test the UMass defense a lot more than they have in this first half. DJ Smith had four saves in the third quarter. He needed only five in the first half. So, you know, Fairfield's testing him. They just need to do a better shot of high-quality shots and location of those shots. I think they need to start testing him high because he's saving everything below his waist. One more save for DJ Smith. That will be eight double-digit save games in UMass 11 games this year. Dylan Beckwith with the backup for Fairfield. He's just a freshman from Wonton, New York. The Stags did not score a single goal in the third quarter. Had it down to 6-4. It's a 3-0 scoring run for the Minutemen. And UMass picks it up. Mike McDonough, the sophomore long stick midi, grabbed it. Right now, Fairfield's in a 10-man ride. The goalie out of the cage. And a whistle shot. Baring just able to get back into the cage. But I like the aggressiveness from Coach Copeland. You need to find a way to generate some offense, to generate some turnovers. 
and the 10 man ride is one way to do that. That was Charlie O'Brien with the shot attempt. Freshman from Chelmsford, Massachusetts. 9-4 lead for UMass. Muller possesses. Guarded tightly by Logan Williamson. Jeff Trainer, just a freshman. He's been excellent today for the Minutemen. Some extra protection in the crease with Andrew Murrow and Bearing there. Here's Consoletti. This could be a pattern here in this fourth quarter, some stalling by the Minutemen with a five goal lead. Yeah, we see here is it, this is what's called, you know, you have the defenseman hung. You have the hung behind the net. The offenseman has the opportunity to go either way and sometimes generate offense. Murrow attempting to pluck the ground ball, flops up again. And Williamson collects it. That was close, a trick shot coming from UMass. Transition for the Minutemen. Iden Schink with a long pole. Looking to get rid of it. And a timeout for Andy Copeland, the head coach of the Stags. Just under 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. UMass up 9 to 4 on Fairfield. We'll be back for more fourth quarter action. This is the CAA Men's Lacrosse Game of the Week on LAC Sports Network. And welcome back to Garber Field on the campus of UMass Amherst. A timeout for the Fairfield Stags. Currently down 9 to 4 in this CAA Men's Lacrosse Game of the Week. It is Fairfield possession. Brendan Glasheen alongside Rob Engelke. Now, what's the discussion you think in that huddle between Andy Copeland, the head coach of Fairfield, and his players? I think it's really just telling the guys about a sense of urgency. You know, you know you're down five, but you need guys to be aggressive. And man, did they listen to their coach. Big goal for the Stags to make it a four goal game. The man to do it, Jake Nestitman, the senior. Captain with his eighth of the season. Part of me is ninth of the season, second today. This is one of the better offensive possessions for a Fairfield. Dodging down the side, looking to the backside, and the shooter changing planes high to low, not shooting it at the goalie's feet, but actually reaching the goal in the air to the far side, to the far pipe. That's exactly how you're taught. Great job by the Fairfield offense. This did been last season in the 8-6 victory for Fairfield over UMass. He actually scored three goals, so he's got good vibes playing the UMass Minutemen. Last year, the game played at Conway Field at Rafferty Stadium in Fairfield, Connecticut. Fairfield needs to keep the, keep the pace of play up right now. They can't, you know, just circle the ball around. They need to start dodging right away. Four goals is nothing in lacrosse, but you need to be aggressive early on. Rodriguez with a nice fake, dumps it to Fleming. Beckwith shot off the post. Ground ball goes UMass's way. 
Fairfield not chasing after the ball in the end line, just a little bit of carelessness. Burke, normally the guy behind the cage to do that, was not found nowhere there. UMass chases the ball and gets the ball back. That will go down as a turnover. And for DJ Smith, he does have 10 saves today. The senior goalkeeper for the Minutemen, now double-digit saves in eight of UMass 11 games this year. Consoletti has some room. Dishes it far side, but Carr couldn't track down the pass. 10-man ride again for Fairfield. Trying to create a turnover. UMass actually clears it and has the two on none opportunity, unable to convert Fairfield, catching a huge break there late in the game. The largest lead was five goals for the Stags, pardon for the Minutemen. Stags cut it down to two, six to four, back in the first half. I want to see more touches for Colin Burke right now. I feel like he really hasn't gotten in his groove at all today. You know, you have to give a little credit to the UMass defense, number 15, Paparo. But I, I think at this point in the game, this is when you want your stars to shine. And uh, Colin Burke is their guy, so he needs to get some touches here. Paparo and his defensive teammate, Tyler Weeks, both made the preseason All-CAA team. Paparo and Valenza have heavily disrupted Fairfield's offense and the rhythm of Colin Burke. Transition time for the Minutemen. Another save by DJ Smith. Burke actually gets the ball, has this one-on-one -on -one effort. But Paparo and DJ able to prevent the goal. Now an interesting scenario here. You have nine minutes left, up by four. Interesting to see how Coach Canella coaches the guys. Do you want them to stay aggressive, try to expand it? Or do you want to slow the ball down, risk having a shot clock turnover? Muller crashing down. Nearly snared by Baring. Carr rolls it out. Trainer getting pressured by Nick Panera, a junior defenseman for Fairfield. You mentioned Coach Canella and what he might want to do here in this fourth quarter. Well, as he knows, as every head coach knows in the CAA, a couple of plays can determine the outcome. The Minutemen can go to 2-1 and one in the league. They had no wins in CAA play last year. Fairfield in jeopardy of going to 0-3. Shot just wide. UMass does keep possession. Fairfield, as you can remember, 2015-2016, back-to-back regular season CAA champions. Inserted in the league just two years ago. They have taken the league by storm. Caught off guard in 2017. Chance today to save their season. Bogart's got three goals today, 21. Loses it for a moment. Iden Schink forces the turnover. Fairfield in transition, bounces off a kneecap. The shot by Beckwith. Mustered away, and UMass in transition. The shot, good! Isaac Paparo, the defenseman, in transition. First goal of the year. It starts on the defensive side and ends with a, de a defenseman scoring. Another great save by DJ Smith, clears it to Paparo. Not only has he shut down Colin Burke today, but now contributing on the offensive end, the pole stepping in from 15 yards. Overhand, high velocity, always tough for the goalie to see. Bearing unable to stop the shot. UMass expanding the lead once again to five goals. UMass Paparo was a long stick guy last year. He's playing a lot of close defense this year. Sophomore season. He's taken five shots this year. Had come up empty in all five. An unassisted goal for inside lacrosse's number 25 freshman a year ago in the country. Consoletti overrides Eidenschink. 
Under seven minutes to go, fourth quarter. The jump pass and the shot good. Carr with the assist. And he hits Jesse Long. Just a little bit of laziness on the Fairfield side. Well, it looks like a broken stick almost, and it creates just a rotation of the defense, leaves the UMass attacker wide open on the doorstep. Better lucky than good sometimes. UMass able to convert up six goals. Jesse Long, another freshman, stepping up for the Minutemen. His second goal of the year came in with just seven games played. He's a freshman from Brookline. The lead is six, largest of the contest for UMass. The face-off matchup actually turned out to be fairly even, which is a great sign for Fairfield. But the most important ones in a close game are towards the end of the game, and UMass has won the last two. 10-10 even in terms of face-off wins. That was our key on the Fairfield side with the combination of Delasho and Fox. We've seen Fox mostly over the span of this contest. And we were wondering coming in, could the UMass offense come to fruition? They've put up a ton of shots. And they've got some great looks, contributors all over. Every time UMass has scored 10 goals this year, they've had a W. That's right. So here we are at 11 goals, up by six. So I think when the offense is clicking and they're able to get into that double-digit area, is a good indicator that they're going to get the win because their defense and DJ Smith, as we've seen today, is just really impressive. Now the only exception to that was Delaware, a 9-6 win, first conference win of the season, first conference win in two years for UMass, a 9-6 victory over the Blue Hens. Lost at Towson last week, 11-8. Chance to go to two and one in the league. If they can hold on to this six goal lead. Fairfield started the fourth quarter pretty well. They do have one goal so far in the frame. Pass to the crease, a shot for Fleming, it's good. Dave Fleming with his seventh of the season. Back down to five. Really good ball movement here. And I love how they're still moving off ball. Fleming just seeing an opening. His guy slides or hedges a little bit and just a little bit of a window is all he needs. Gets it out of his stick really quickly. DJ Smith unable to save that one. Fleming from San Carlo, California. Attended St. Ignatius Prep in San Francisco. two years ago when he was a freshman. He was the 2014 ECAC Rookie of the Year. That was the year before Fairfield transferred into the CAA Conference. Big face-off win here for Fairfield. Again, you know, these games are never over. Lacrosse is a game of swings. Five goals is nothing as long as you're winning face-offs. The Stittman dodges the bouncer wide again. Jake's got two goals today. Does take a ton of shots. Another shot good. Fleming again. The junior, Dave Fleming, rallying Fairfield a little bit. He's on a two-goal run himself, and the lead for UMass back down to four. Really impressed by him. You love to see the senior leadership stepping up. This is just an individual effort, not giving up. You have the short stick. The slide comes, actually. Low to high shot, which is really tough to save. Keeps it to the back pipe. I love that he's not giving up in this scenario. That's what you need out of the senior leadership. Makes sense to fire there. He had the short stick, Anthony Real of UMass defending him. At the X, Fairfield's won two in a row. 
Rack trying to step up. It's Delasho at the X. And it's a UMass victory at the, at the X. With four and a half to play in regulation. Suggestions here for the Fairfield defense. You know, I, I think they need to just try and obviously make sure UMass scores, but is it the time to press out? I'm not sure because, oh, great save there. Bearing with the up top attempt, he brings it down. And that's what you wanted almost if you're Fairfield, a quick shot, but a turnover created by the Minutemen. In front of it, collected by Massachusetts. Rinkus got of the way. UMass wants to keep the foot on the gas pedal here as Trainer runs away from trouble and he loops it out to Muller. The Soskus gave it a try, but no good. And a timeout for Fairfield. So before, before the timeout happened, you know, it's one of those things where a few years ago I'd say, yes, you need to start pressing out because there's no shot clock. But nowadays, when you, with the shot clock, and referees understand that as much as they don't want to admit it, they, they're quicker with the shot clock towards the later in the game. So as long as you're playing good defense, UMass probably wasn't going to be too aggressive. You try to get the shot clock going. With this timeout, I would imagine what you're going to see is Coach Copeland is going to double the ball, especially because the ball is behind the cage. That's a good spot to double the ball because obviously you can't shoot from behind the cage. So I imagine you're going to see a double and try to create turnover. He's Rob Engelke, former Princeton def uh, attackman. Brendan Glasheen also alongside here. UMass has been outstanding at Garber Field since 2001. The Minutemen are 79 and 29 at home and 145 and 84 overall. Six seasons in which they've had 12 plus wins under head coach Greg Canella. You played UMass back in your heyday when you were with Princeton back in 2009, NCAA tournament first round game. We did. UMass had a great team that year. They had Doc Schneider in goal, who's actually now an assistant coach for them. They also had the likes of Bobby Hayes on the midfield. Uh, they had a great team, but fortunately, the good guys were, were up to the task, and Princeton won that game. We went on to lose to Cornell <laughs> in the quarters. Um, but it was a great game at 1952 Stadium. Definitely one of the more memorable ones playing against UMass and Coach Canella. And your former head coach, Bill Tierney, and his Denver Pioneers now, number four, in the inside of the cross pole at 8 and 2. Hofstra of the CAA, number two, at 10 and 0. And you mentioned. Coach uh, Doc Schneider, he's in his eighth season. We were talking with Greg Canella before the game today. One year, just took one year for Doc Schneider to leave UMass, and then he couldn't wait to get back here. He was in a cubicle, and he said to Coach Canella, hey, I want back in. Fairfield, though, trying to make noise, down just four. The Stittman fires off the post and skitters away. It does stay, the possession arrow does stay Fairfield's way. Great job by Coach Copeland. I love that timeout, able to double the ball. They create the turnover. Ground ball creates a fast break just off the pipe. That would have been a huge goal for Fairfield. They got to stay aggressive in this scenario. Rodriguez pass nearly gets away. A double team for the UMass defense on Burke. He is getting swarmed right now. Falls down, no flag comes out. And now some aggressiveness from Fleming. Luke Valenza facing up with him. Getting chippy in these final three minutes. Miss Dittman off the screen by Fleming. Dish to Ford, pardon Beckwith. Some more shoving as Smith leaves the crease. And he comes away with it. DJ Smith has been a beast in cage today for the Minutemen. The Fairfield goal is empty. An easy shot. 
second of the game for the young freshman, Jesse Long. Makes it 12-7, UMass. Brendan, it really starts with the defense. Fairfield a little careless, a little sloppy with their passing, but the defense is able to create the turnover. More importantly, get the ground ball down to the offense. Fairfield tries to double, and as you can see, Mullen and Long able to connect. Long with his second. The lead is now five. He came in seven games played, one goal over the seven. Today he's got two. Freshman from Brookline. Face off victory for the Minutemen. They're starting to feel it here at Garber Field. UMass approaching a two and one record in CAA play. Coach Canella wants to take a timeout and pause action with 1.45 to go. And we'll keep it here. Yeah, I want to take you back a little bit to where there was a timeout by Fairfield. They doubled the ball, able to get the ball back and in transition and hit the pipe. They were able to chase it down, but then they there was a turnover there where UMass is able to get the ball, and when they had their turn, they were able to get a goal. This last faceoff, I have to say, I think may have been the last, you know, may have been the last nail in the coffin there with a minute 45 left, five goals with possession. It's a tough task at this point. Fairfield in jeopardy of going to 0 and 3 in CAA play after back-to-back -back regular season titles in 2015 and 2016. Talking with Coach Canella, who is huddled up with his UMass players after the timeout. Coach, I asked him, over your first four games, you start the season 0-4, and, and then over your last six, you're 4-2. They could go to 5-2 and two today. And the line, I like the line that he said. He said, hey, we, we signed up for 13 games, not four. And I think his, the message was clear at the beginning of the season. When you play teams like Army, Ohio State, Albany, all three of those teams, not at the time, but now are in the top 10. Those are huge games. You look back now as growing, you go through the growing pains to get to CAA play. Yeah, and it makes you feel better looking at your record. Obviously, they're four and six, um, so it's not something that you brag about. When a lot of those losses are to quality teams, it makes you swallow that a lot easier. And, you know, a performance like today, to be honest, is even more important to really boost your confidence against a quality team, Fairfield, a conference, you know, a conference opponent. So uh, UMass finding, finding the right ways and getting on a groove. The cage remains empty for Fairfield. Muller getting harassed. Muller fires a nice stop by the long stick, Eidenschink. Transition for the Stags. Under 90 seconds to play, they need goals in a hurry. Fleming's got two tallies today. Burke has just been smothered all afternoon. The sophomore co-CAA player of the year last year. He's had a tough time. He's had 100 shots on the year, yep. uh, not including this game, which is just incredible. The next, the next highest shooter on their team is 66, and I think UMass, their highest shooter is 60-something as well. So, yep. I mean, he's just been shooting all over the place, and he just hasn't been able to do so today. Burke hits Rodriguez on the pass. Rodriguez second of the game. As you can see, Burke gets the defenseman hung, like we saw on the other side of the field, and just a great cut. I like, to, I like how Fairfield has been cutting off ball today. Uh, they haven't been able to really generate some, you know, they haven't really been able to beat their one-on-one -on -one matchups too often, so the off-ball cutting really seems to what have been helping, but unfortunately they're figuring it out too little or too late. Rodriguez on the other side of the pass from Burke. He's now got nine goals, Rodriguez, in three CAA games. A total of 13 goals on the season. Picked a good time to get going. Stags are in trouble, though. Shot. Might have heard the pipe a little bit, but Smith, another save. He's in double-digit saves, as we told you, for the eighth game of the 11 total he's played this year. 30 seconds to go, and UMass can run this clock out with a four-goal lead. The Minutemen 
improve to five and six on the year. More importantly, two and one in CAA play. They've now won five of their last seven games. And UMass victorious over the Fairfield Stags. 12 to eight, the final at Garber Field in Amherst, Massachusetts. We'll step aside, we'll come back with head coach Greg Canella and freshman Jeff Trainer of the Minutemen. The CAA Game of the Week on Lack Sports Network has more coming after this. And welcome back to Garber Field in Amherst, Massachusetts. Just a beautiful day, a beautiful weekend, a holiday weekend. We thank you for joining us for today's action. UMass pulls out this CAA contest to go to two and one in the league, 12 to eight final over the Fairfield Stags. A big win for Coach Canella and company. A tough loss to Towson last time out, but for a team that had no wins in conference last year, Rob, to come out now to a two and one record, you, they were very impressive. They showed up offensively and defensively. They did. I think that's what's most impressive for me today for their performance. Their first half, we talked about a key theme was to them to be aggressive offensively, and they did exactly that. They were shooting the ball all over the place, on cage, keeping possession, limiting the turnovers. And then the second half, the defense really needed to step up. And DJ Smith made a ton of early saves in the third quarter. But also the, the defense was just flying all over the place, sliding. They also played a little bit of zone. Um, so I was very impressed. You know, end to end, everyone played really well. A complete win for UMass in conference play. How about DJ Smith today? 13 saves. He's now got double digit saves in eight of 11 games. He only played three minutes against Fairfield a year ago. So he showed up today and we're hoped to be joined by Jeff Trainer, who had a five point day. That is a career best for Trainer, the freshman. He had two goals and a career high in a game, three assists. So just a stellar effort for the Minutemen. They look like a problem, a team that could cause some issues down the stretch in this regular season for the CAA. Next up for the Minutemen, they are at Hofstra, so that's a tough one. And then home to Drexel. We'll have that game live on the Cross Sports Network on April 28th. Fairfield, though, drops to 0-3. That is not a good sight for Andy Copeland's team. Desperation mode, that was the term he used coming into today. If you're 0-3, you got two games to go. Uh, not where you want to be for the Stags, but, I mean, Give credit to them. They made this a game in late the first half, and they fought all the way through. They did. I, their face-off team did an outstanding job against Noah Rack. Their offense did a great job. They did a good, especially coming out in the second half, they just unfortunately ran into a very hot goalie in DJ Smith. But I think they have a lot to build on, especially the fact that they're so young. So, uh, you know, their offense has a lot to improve on, but they have plenty of time to do so. We'll now head over to the head coach of the UMass Minutemen, Greg Canella. Coach, congratulations on the win. Your team now 2-1 and one in CAA play. When we spoke on the phone earlier this week, we touched on your 0-4 start, some really tough teams that you played in the non-conference, and now you look at your team 11 games into the year. You're 2-1 and one in the league. A real complete effort for your team today. It was. You know, we'd like to finish the game off a little bit better than that. Uh, they 10-manned us there in the fourth quarter. We had some opportunities to, to score or put ourselves in position to score. We didn't do it. And... Uh, Fairfield's a good team. You know, they made us pay for those turnovers and, uh, you know, kept kept themselves in the game all the way to the end. How about the man in goal for you today? Over to your right, DJ Smith, yeah. 13 saves. We were just saying it a second ago, double-digit saves in 8 of 11 games. Uh, your thoughts on his effort today? Well, his effort's been great all year. You know, he's a senior, he's a captain. Uh, he's been super all year, very consistent, and it shows in his game. Uh, today, I thought he made a couple saves in the third quarter that just really kind of pushed us forward uh, and made us relax a little bit more. You know, they, they, if they make it a three-goal game or two-goal game, it's a different story uh, the way that they can play. So DJ was fantastic. We're happy for him and real proud of him. Hey, Coach Rob Engelke here. Congrats on the win. Uh, two guys I just want to highlight uh, that I was impressed with today were Jeff Trainer and Devin Spencer, two freshmen. Um, uh, yeah, trainer, was, trainer specifically, he had three assists today. I, I love seeing the big midfielder dodging with his head up. Can you just talk about those two guys for me? Yeah, I think you're talking about Jesse Long, right? Uh, 32. Uh, Jesse had two goals. Uh, but uh, number two, coach, number two, Jeff Trainer. Yeah, yeah, J Jeff Trainer is, you know, he's been consistent all year. He's a great player. He actually went to the same high school as DJ and Bill Ricker High School here in Mass. Uh, Jeff is a you know three-sport athlete, the type of guy that uh, you want on your team. Tremendous athlete, and, and like you said, he has the ability to score it and feed it at all times. Coach, hey, thanks so much. We'll turn it over to DJ now. We appreciate it, and uh, good, 
Congratulations Thank on the Thank you win. guys. Happy Easter. It is a holiday weekend. A lot of the students not here, but the Minutemen came out with fight, integrity, all of those hype words, so to say. A win 12 to 8. We're now joined by the man in gold today, the senior captain from Billerica, Massachusetts, DJ Smith. DJ, first and foremost, congratulations on the victory. You know, last year you didn't play much against this Fairfield team, and you came out and outlasted Tyler Baring. Uh, for you personally, eight double-digit save games now over the team's 11. Uh, how are you feeling right now about your game 11 games into the season? You know, uh, real happy with it. Uh, I mean, like Coach Canella said, senior year is my last time that I'm probably going to play lacrosse in my life, so I'm just kind of letting it fly right now. Hey, DJ, congrats on the win. Uh, could you just talk about those few saves beginning in the second half in the early third quarter? Fairfield came firing out, peppering you with some shots. Can you just talk about how important it is to get those few first saves in the second half? Uh, it's huge. I mean, we didn't see a lot of shots in the entire first quarter, so uh, during the uh, halftime warm-up with Doc, he just talked me through uh, keep my hands up, be ready for the shots that are going to come, and uh, getting, the, getting the first few saves there in the uh, third quarter helps you uh, – Get a little confidence for the rest of the game. And we'll get you out on this. Your team now 2-1 and one in the CAA, a date at Hofstra next week. Undefeated Hofstra, number two team in the country. As Rob just mentioned, how important was it to sort of get a complete win here today and then go in to play a really tough Hofstra team? You know, it's huge. It's a good confidence boost for the whole team. Um, next game is always the biggest game we got. So regardless if it's Hofstra, Towson, Fairfield, whatever, we're happy to uh, be on to uh, Hofstra and get a big win again this weekend. DJ Smith, a goalie with fearsome face paint. Congratulations <laughs> on the win. Thank you very much. DJ Smith, the goalie, had 13 saves today and a win for the Minutemen, 12 to 8. They now improve to 5 and 6, 2 and 1 in the CAA. Fairfield drops to 3 and 9, 0 oh and 3 in CAA conference action. Thanks for watching the CAA Game of the Week on LAC Sports Network. For Rob Engelke, our entire crew, my name is Brendan Gansheen. We will now send you to the LSN Broadcast Center for the CAA Postgame Show.